Hello, my name is Ashley Pearsall and I'm a third year DPT student at Elon University. In this video, I will be recapping the NMES parameters used in a 2008 Level 2 evidence study examining the effects of NMES training on vertical jump performance. 27 active males aged 18 to 33 years old were recruited for this study and randomly divided into one of the following three treatment groups. Group 1 subjects participated in a traditional force NMES program intended to improve muscular strength. Group 2 subjects participated in a traditional endurance NMES program intended to increase muscular endurance. And the group 3 subjects comprised a control group who received no NMES training. Subjects in both of the training groups received NMES training three days a week for five days a week while sitting in a chair with their knees flexed to 90 degrees and their hips flexed to 110 degrees. Four 50 by 89 millimeter electrodes were applied to their bilateral proximal and distal aspects of the vastus lateralis and vastus medialis muscles, as you can see here on our subject. It is important to note that the authors made no mention of any means taken to ensure that the electrodes were optimally positioned over the motor points of those muscles. Additionally, the authors did not mention any means to ensure that the electrodes were consistently placed uh, on each subject at each training session. Each session followed a similar design and that training always began with a five minute warm up period in which subjects received stimulation at five hertz for, and 10 milliamps for five minutes. Then the actual workout portions of the training sessions began. During these portions, the protocol on the NMS, NMES machine differed for each training group. However, there were some consistencies. Namely, these consistencies included biphasic symmetrical rectangular waveforms of pulse currents applied at a pulse duration of 450 microseconds with a 1.8 second ramp up and 1.2 second ramp down time. This sort of device, such that you can see here, the MP Neuromuscular Electric Stimulation Machine, is just a standard machine that all of these parameters can easily be input in for a, stu for a study such as this. Subjects in the strengthening group received quad stimulation for 15 minutes during which steady tetanic stimulations of an 80, hertz, an 80 hertz current were applied over a duration of 15 minutes. The on time was 6 seconds and the off time was 18 seconds for this protocol. Conversely, subjects in the endurance group received 60 minutes of quad stimulation with steady tetanic stimulations applied at a 25 hertz current with an on time of 10 seconds and an off time of 6 seconds. Intensity for each subject varied based on what they indicated they could maximally tolerate and it was changed throughout the session to um, it was changed throughout the session as accommodation occurred. Each training session concluded with a 15 minute recovery period during which stimulation was administered at a frequency of 5 Hz and 10 milliamps. The primary outcome measure of vertical jump performance was assessed on three separate occasions, three days prior to NMES training and one week and five weeks post-training to, to observe both short and long-term effects. The specific jumping protocol required each subject to perform a series of six jumps as you will see here demonstrated by the subject. The subject starts in a position of 90 degree knee flexion and holds that position for one second before exploding upward. A 10 second resting interval between jumps is applied. The subjects were asked to maintain their hands on their hips throughout the jump to prevent any counter movements. In this particular study, subjects' jump height was measured via a displacement sensor, but measuring jump height could be performed more easily by using a standard Vertec in the clinic if you have that equipment at your disposal. The, finding of this, the findings of this study highlight that two vastly different NMES training parameters can yield comparable results on jump height. Both training groups demonstrated statistically significant improvements in jump height from trial 1 to trial 2 and maintained these gains even through trial 3. However, no further statistically significant changes occurred between trials 2 and 3. In the control group, subjects demonstrated no change in jump height from trial 1 to trial 2 and actually demonstrated a statistically significant decline in performance at trial 3. Clinically, these findings are significant and have implications on future practice. 
Often the endurance protocol would not be feasible in the clinic due to its long duration, but the strength protocol could be applied within a reasonable amount of time. For subjects nearing the end of their rehab programs um, and who are beginning to resume their normal sports activities, you can not only use NMES to improve their vertical jump height, but you could also expect that these improvements could be maintained over a fairly prolonged period of time, such as the five weeks used in this study. The authors are not certain of the exact mechanisms for the change in uh, vertical jump height, but they do offer some uh, potential explanations. The proposed theories behind the benefits of uh, NMES training on vertical jump performance include greater recruitment of motor units, improve, improved synchronization of the motor unit firing, as well as a reversal in the typical recruitment patterns as NMES training uh, stimulates the recruitment of larger motor units before smaller ones. Regardless of the exact mechanism explaining the outcomes, um, this approach does seem promising and I'm encouraged to try it in a clinical setting. I hope that after watching this video, you too will be inspired to try a similar protocol as well. Thank you.